for joining me for episode 14 of My Doll's House Diary. Now the fabric I spoke about in the last episode has arrived and I've been busy making Roman blinds and curtains for the Doll's House kitchen. And here's how I did it. So I ordered four pieces of fabric and each of them are a quarter of a metre wide by a metre long. And then that gives me plenty um, of leftovers to use for other projects. And the first one I've got is this lovely herringbone linen. And it's a really nice, quite thick um, fabric, but really lovely um, quality. Feels lovely and soft. And the colour is oatmeal. And the herringbone pattern isn't too obvious on there, which is what I wanted. And then the next piece is a piece of gingham. And this is 100% cotton and the colour is actually called wine and pale olive. I really like that. I was worried about, because you can never really tell on screen um, what the actual colours are going to be like, so I was a little bit worried that it would look a bit green. But it's actually a really lovely sort of beigey colour which contrasts lovely with that sort of burgundy wine check there. And then the next piece, this is a piece of linen again and it's just in a nice brown colour and I thought I could use that for fabric maybe in another room but also I could use it for the bases of the baskets because it's got a lovely sort of texture to it and I think those three contrast really nicely as well and I'm really pleased because I've been looking for a nice gingham um, for the kitchen that wasn't too bright and I didn't want a sort of a red and white or something like that. I didn't want anything too bright. I wanted it to be quite sort of rustic looking. And I love how those three look together there. And then I ordered a fourth. And I didn't really order this for the kitchen. Although I hoped it might contrast. But it doesn't. But I'm going to be doing something like this in the living room. And this is a lovely beige and green plaid fabric. And I love plaid and I'll be able to use this in the living room and that also goes nicely with the um, oatmeal herringbone and this brown as well and again I like those colours together so I think in the living room where I want to sort of have a nice rustic um, sort of look maybe with a wooden sofa and that sort of thing I think those colours look really nice together so for the kitchen the one thing I've really been looking forward to doing is making the curtains because I think the curtains really do um, make an impact on a room. So I'm going to make the curtains following my video here on YouTube which is called 112th Scale Doll's House Curtains and Blind Tutorial and I'll pop a link to that at the end and then I'm also going to show you how to make a lined door curtain. So I'm going to use the oatmeal for the blind I'll use the gingham for the curtains and then on the door I want to use the oatmeal as the main colour but I'm going to line it with the gingham and I'm going to again try and do a sort of no sew door curtain just to make it really easy so I'll just be gluing the fabrics together. Okay let's get started. So I've started by making a template of the window so I've got the actual window width and height here and then that's how far over the door is so I've got 25 millimeters or one inch before the edge of the door frame and the sink comes out sort of halfway between those two so I want the curtain to hang down in line with the sink that's beneath and then I've got about an inch here um, above the sink and below the window so I want the curtains to hang down a little bit underneath and if you're sort of fitting them into a doll's house, it's a good idea to make a template of the window. If you're doing a room box, it's easier to get in and measure as you go along. But as my kitchen's quite deep, I'm unable to do that. So I've started by making the blind, and I've actually elaborated on the design um, in the video a little bit. Um, and I've made more of a sort of Roman blind. And all you need to do is add in extra fabric, probably about 10 millimetres or maybe 12 millimetres, um, let's say half an inch for each pleat that you want. So you can do it as long as you want, and you're just really pleating it like a fan. And then gluing in your um, piece of bamboo or your piece of dowel at the bottom there. So I just wanted a couple of pleats there. 
and then that will fit right along the top of the window there and come down about that far. So I've overlapped as well onto the side of the walls. And I'll actually show you how I did that because I want to make um, another little Roman blind using the gingham fabric for that little side window at the back of the kitchen. So I'll show you how I actually um, achieved those pleats when I do that. But I just also wanted to show you, I'm using um, the bamboo skewers um, for the rails and they're about three millimeter um, in diameter so about an eighth of an inch and what I'm going to do is just use the wood dye to color these so that they're the same as the other wood. So I've got a little tray here and I'm going to color them on there holding on to the pointed end so you don't need to get your fingers dirty and then I can cut them to length when I come to do the curtains. And I've got one here for the, the window and I'm doing one for the door as well and these are obviously a lot longer than I need but it's better to have them too long than not long enough. I'm just going to take a piece of kitchen towel and just wipe that along. That can then just be left to dry. Okay, so whilst my kitchen curtains are drying, I'll show you how I do that Roman blind effect. And I'm going to make the Roman blind for the small window um, on the back left-hand wall of the kitchen. Now my window is 65 millimetres across, that's about two and a half inches, so I've cut a piece of dowel to that exact measurement. And as the edges of my blinds are going to be seen, I want to create a hem at either edge. Now I've cut a piece here that's five millimetres wider than my rail on each side, that's to create the hem, and a lot longer than I need. I want the drop to be 50 millimetres, and I've just cut a piece, I haven't even measured it, 150, so far longer than I need, but we'll trim it off at the bottom once we've created the pleats, and I just find it easier to do it that way. So I'm going to begin by gluing over that hem at each edge. And I like to begin by just folding it into the fabric first. Creasing it in. And as I want it to be an exact measurement, I'll just measure it against the rail there. So I'll just fold less of a hem on that side. And I'm just using my normal tacky glue for this. So glue the hem down on the first side. And it's good when you've got a fabric with lines or checks on because then you can follow the line. Make sure you're getting it nice and straight. I just want to put that there to check that I'm not folding in too much. And then just follow that line down. Okay, so this is now going to become the top edge of the fabric and our piece of rail will actually be folded in at the bottom to create that little um, sort of curve there. So again, fold over a hem along the top, again just sort of go to five millimetres or a quarter of an inch. And then just before you glue that down, just snip away those corners. Oops. And that way they don't stick out then once you've glued it down. I always just let to, like to let that dry off for a, a minute or so, not even that. And that way you find it doesn't seep through the fabric as much. Fold that down. Okay, so turn it the right way round. And then just work out where you want your first 
um, sort of pleat to be and again fold it down and if you're using a pattern again follow the line so I want it to be about there and I haven't measured but I think that's probably about 12 millimeters or half an inch so just fold it in like that and then you want to you can lift it up and apply a bit of glue underneath so that you can glue the front edge down and then fold that back down stick it down keeping it straight this fabric's just been cut I'm not sure what the term is but it's a little bit skew with the fabric isn't actually in line with the checks so I'm having to sort of stretch it as I go along to make sure that it's that it's straight I think it's just something to do with the way it's been cut like that and then turn that over and you can apply a little bit of glue at the back of that flap as well. That will stick like that. And then again at the front, fold in where you want your next pleat. So we're just sort of making folds of fabric like that and then gluing it down at the front and back. That one's not quite straight along that line. So I'll just straighten that up. Again, the fabric's sort of pulling a little bit. It doesn't want to go in a straight line. I'm trying to get it straight and sitting straight against the next lot of checks like that and then again you can apply glue under the front flap that down and then again go around to the back and glue that flap as well this will just stop it all from sort of sitting upwards on your window so that it looks more natural more heavy Now I worked out that I want the actual drop of the blind to be about 50 millimeters, so two inches. So what I'm actually, I was just trying to work out there whether to put another flap and then put the rail in, but I'm actually going to make it shorter. So these are about 15 millimeters. So I'm going to create now a 15 millimeter hem to enclose the rail in so that it looks like three even pleats. So I actually want to go down to about 45, which is about there. So fold the fabric to where you want it to come to. And my rail will be sitting about there. like that so it looks like three even pleats and then trim off at the back but leave again about that much so you've got enough to glue down at the back 
So sort of look at it and make sure you're happy with the thickness of the pleats and then just make a little snip at the side and then you can open it out and just cut across and again I just want to snip those bottom corners off and then I'm going to glue in the rail along there and again you want to make sure you're keeping it straight with your checks or your lines so let's apply the glue and then we can have a look from the front so lay that in there fold over and come and have a look from the front and I just want it sitting so I've got that sort of red line along the bottom there Push it in as well so you can't see the edges of the rail and you've got time as well just to manoeuvre it before the glue completely dries. Pushing that rail in a little bit and then I just want to actually trim off a little bit more of that corner because that flaps overhanging at the front there. Pop a little bit more glue in there. like that. So a really simple way of making a little Roman blind with no stitching. Okay so as I said earlier for the door curtain I want it to be cream with a gingham backing. So I've measured the door and I've cut pieces here allowing for a 5mm hem top and bottom and at each edge and I'm just going to hem them round and then I'm going to glue them together Okay, so both of those pieces of fabric are now hemmed and I'm just going to leave those to dry before I then put them back to back and glue them together. So I'll just pop those over there. And I want the curtain to be sort of open halfway across the door and then a little bit at the bottom flicked back so we can see that nice lining. Now I've cut the curtain rail three millimetres longer than I needed it, so one eighth of an inch longer than the actual door or wider than the door. And because one of the ends is going to be exposed, I want to make some finials. So I've had these little beads for many years and I've used them for lots of things over the years. So I'm going to use a couple of these. And the actual um, little walnut ones are just the right colour um, for my curtain rail. Or oak, should I say. And then I've also got here a couple of 3mm diameter... Um, wooden draw knobs and they just fit nicely into those beads like that so that's going to make my finial and then I'm going to glue that to the end of the rod so I'll glue it into place first I just want to glue the um, draw knob into the bead first let me get um, focused in a little bit better that. So I'll just pop a little bit of glue inside the bead. A bit fiddly, I should have had my tweezers for this. And then I just want to glue the little stem of the draw knob inside the bead. 
there like that. Fits in there perfectly. And then the same with this one. Actually, let me apply the glue to the drawn knot. Might be a bit easier. And you can add these to the end of your sort of kitchen curtain rods as well. I'll just let those dry for a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue to each end of the rail. And then just glue the bead onto there. Press that into place. I'm just holding it for a moment until the glue begins to take. The same at the other end. So I'm going to leave that to dry off and then I'm going to apply a little bit of wood dye to each of those draw knobs. And whilst they're drying I'm going to glue these two curtain pieces together. So I'm just going to apply glue around the outside edge of one of the pieces. It's just gone really dark outside, I think it's going to rain. that dry off for a moment. And then I'm just going to stick that on top, making sure it's lined up all the way around. Now I don't want to press it together at the top yet because I actually want to insert the rail before I glue it together. So I'll just press it down along the bottom edges and then bring the rail back in and yeah, I just think in what edge of the door I wanted it then so I wasn't gluing it in the wrong wrong place and I want that fairly close to the top I'll just put a little bit more glue on my card and in my haste to sort of get this done I haven't um, added the wood dye yet to the little finial knob so I'll do that in a moment just mean to be an extra careful not to get any on the fabric. Like that. Just so I'm just enclosing the rod in there. I'll just pull it over a little tiny bit, I think. Make sure it's straight all the way along. And then before that glue has a chance to dry, I just want to create a few um, creases in the curtain. So you've got that sort of nice ruffled effect along the top of the rail there. And I wanted the curtain to be about 38 millimeters across the door, so I'm just going to get my ruler and check. That's about 43, so I'll go over a little bit more. Once that's dried at the top, I can sort of follow those creases down and either just crease them in with my fingers or apply a little bit of glue just to hold them in place. I'm just going to grab some pegs. And I just want to put a few pegs along the top there. They actually sit nicely around the rail. On there as well. And I just wanted to create a little bit more of a crease in that end. And then I'll peg that one in as well. Again, I'll leave that to dry and then I'll crease those folds in all the way down. 
because it's lovely thick fabric I'm actually going to glue that grease in at the back of the fabric And then I want to show that lining off, so I'm going to actually glue that part of the curtain round like that. That should be enough. And again, I'll just leave that to dry off for a moment. So I just want to very carefully um, colour these end finials now. So I've got the wood dye a long way away from the <laughs> curtain. I just want to dot that on. And then I've got a piece of tissue here handy just to wipe off the excess to keep the colour correct end as well. So now that's all dry I'm going to go and glue that into place. And there is the door curtain in place and I think that's beginning to look really sort of nice and homey now. Let me see if I can just bring you round so you can see the little Roman blind there as well. Not sure if I've got the light there in the best place. But I'm really pleased with how that looks and I really love that fabric as well. It's just sort of what I wanted. Now I can go ahead and make the little baskets for the unit here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm sure you'll agree the kitchen is now beginning to look really warm and cosy and I can't wait to start adding the rest of the furniture and the accessories. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!